He was a fun, exciting baby. He was very active all the time, loved to climb, loved to, you know, he climbed stairs before he walked. Also feisty, you know, wasn't an e wasn't the easiest baby, was already like had this kind of strong personality from a really young age. Hard to handle, always into everything, climbing around, uh, very headstrong, liked to get his own way, even as a baby. Totally normal, healthy, run, jump, swim, play, yeah, you know, and super active, you know, like we used to call him Monkey Boy because he would climb everything. You are special, you're the only one, only one like you. Will was diagnosed in April of 1997, but the November before, we knew something was wrong. Just, he had these horrible stomach aches, you know, it was like, mostly at night, but he would wake up just crying that his stomach hurt. He would always complain of stomach aches, and we would take him to the doctor, have him checked out. They even did by February, they were doing ultrasounds. But days would go by where he'd be fine and then he'd be in this horrible pain. And so we took him to the doctor, got it checked out. They're like, yeah, nothing seems wrong. And you just kind of say, okay, I have a stomach ache. But they, you know, they hurt bad because he'd wake up just crying and, you know, like doubled over in pain. So you knew it was really bad stomach ache. But, you know, you still don't really think it's anything that serious. Finally, in April, he was running um, what we felt was a low-grade fever, and he had no energy at all. And this is a kid who always had energy. And we had neighbors that were both medical professionals. The husband was a doctor, a cardiologist, and uh, the wife had been an intensive care nurse. And she came and looked at him and said, we need to get him to the hospital. You know, let's go take him. And so her husband just checked him out in a conference room at the hospital. And Vic, who was the doctor, in the doctor's lounge, palpitating his stomach. And I could tell by the look on his face, something wasn't right. And he, though, didn't let on, and he said, you know, I feel something in there, but, you know, could be hernia, something like that. Let's just take him over to the emergency room. So, unbeknownst to me, he went and he talked to one of the doctors in the emergency room and said, this kid has a tumor in his stomach. And then that's when the whole thing started. So it was like, bam, bam, go from conference room at the hospital, take him over to, e to the emergency, he called the emergency doctor and said, you know, I think there's something going on. And hours later, they said that he had a tumor in his abdomen and it's cancer. We were at the hospital till one o'clock in the morning. And I can remember as we're getting all these different tests for him, Paul saying, you know, don't you really feel bad for people whose kids, they tell them something catastrophic. And we're thinking he had a hernia because Paul had a hernia when he was five years old. So we did not think that it was going to be anything major. Doctor comes in at about one in the morning and said, your son has cancer. As a parent, that's the worst possible thing that you ever want to hear. 97, so he turned four in December. So he was like four and five months when he was diagnosed. And he said, that's the bad news. The good news is, it's a cancer called a Wilms tumor. And a Wilms tumor is encapsulated in the kidney, and he has a 90% survival rate. So tomorrow morning, you need to go to Phoenix Children's Hospital and start getting admitted and go through some things there. So, you know, all that night we're all sad and crying. Our kid has cancer and we're looking at, you know, trying to get the information about what Wilms tumor is like. And the, a Wilms tumor is about a 90% chance of survival. It's a, it's a pretty successful cancer that they can deal with. And they admitted Will that day. That evening, they took him into surgery to do a biopsy on the tumor. And they said the following morning then, they'd sit down with us and go over all the details and everything that they found. The next day, this was a Tuesday, they sat us down and they said, Will does not have a Wilms tumor. He has what's called neuroblastoma, 
he stage four we found spots on bone that there's bone you know it's in his bone marrow um, and then there was one last test that they were waiting to come in that took a few extra days which would kind of make it the worst that it could be which is a certain gene that's called the NMIC and if it's amplified then that meant that it was worst possible scenario and then when that came back he had that as well. So we went from one day thinking 90% survival rate will go through chemo things will be fine to your child has a 20% chance of living he has to have a bone marrow transplant here's the protocol that he has to go through and it's an extremely aggressive cancer we need to start treating this immediately because there's a good chance your son isn't gonna live on my way back to the hospital, I was thinking of all the things that could have happened that could be worse than this. And, uh, and so I got back to the hospital and I told Lisa, I'm like, I think we're really lucky. And she's like, what? And you know, it's like, how are we lucky? And I said, well, I said, one, he could have gotten hit by a car and already be dead. You know, so at least he's not dead yet. He's still here and we have 20% chance of survival. And I said, the statistics could be worse. So that could be worse. And, uh, and I just kind of was like playing out these scenarios of like how it could be worse. And she's like, oh my God, you have a kid with cancer that is, you know, more than likely not going to make it. And you're telling me how things could be worse, you know. So it was just, it's just weird how your brain plays with, with it all, you know.